Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I've been gone for quite a bit. I apologize. Summertime and kids and a new puppy and being in a boot has just caused me to have to step back and take a break. Um, kids are back in school and puppy is doing good. She's sleeping over here on a bed with Marley May. <laughs> I should show you guys actually. Let's see. Look at that. Aren't they adorable? Hi, Marley. I need a bigger bed. So I'm taking donations for a bigger bed for the dogs. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so today's tutorial, I've had this cut out for weeks, for weeks, just sitting on my sewing table, wanting to do a video for you guys. This is the Apothecary handbag from Sincerely Jen. It is such a cool pattern. I adore this pattern. Look at this. This is the small one. So there's two sizes. There's a small and a large. Um, I just, I don't use a lot of large bags. So I made a small one. Um, I mean, it's just so classy looking. I love it. It has an oval round bottom. So be prepared for that. Other than that, it's a pretty easy bag. You could do it. All right, let's go over the details of the bag. So I used, this is the new Kaya collection from Indo Love Creation. It feels like um, a leather material. It is absolutely a dream to work with. It's sewed like butter. It feels amazing. I'll see how it wears, but this is sea salt is this color. She's currently all sold out, but she restocks quickly. So just be patient. Um, I will link it below. These poles that I used are also from her. Aren't they just so cute? They're so funky and different. Um, they're from her. And then other than that, everything else is my website, um, for hardware. Okay. So the back, it's got a slip pocket. This is from Fabric Therapy. I will link all of the supplies. This is a water resistant canvas. All right, and then you've got the two zipper pockets on the front. Very cool. And then you have a recessed closed zipper there. And then inside, I just did a dark gray waterproof canvas, so it's kind of hard to see any details, but there is a zipper pocket on the inside. You could totally put a slip pocket in there too. I think both would work. Um, my waterproof canvas, the gray waterproof canvas that I used on this bag is from fabric.com. And I think that is all the supplies. Very light on the interfacing. I only use Decaville Heavy in the base and Decaville Light around the top. And that is all the interfacing I used for this bag. So it's pretty straightforward. And guys, it's adorable. I I kept the first one I made for myself and took it on a trip and it was a perfect trip bag. I really, really like it. Look at that. All right. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all your feedback and questions. I try to get to them as best I can. Um, yeah, let's start sewing up this awesome apothecary bag. Okay, let's go over our pieces for this apothecary. Um, I've kind of prepped a couple of things. I already did my crossbody strap. I've shown how to do this so many times. Um, my last like 10 videos, I think I did it like in the video. So I'm not going to do it in this one, but I used my large wide mouth strap that I saw on my website. I really like these, especially for these thicker, um, these thicker material type crossbody straps. Okay. So I got that done. I did one handle. I'm going to show you the second one because the crossbody strap and the handle are all sewn up the same way. So I will show you on that one handle. So I have my two handles here. I have my four connectors for my handles. And then I have two connectors for my D-rings for the crossbody strap. Um, I'm just going to dig through this bucket here. Let's see. This is my zipper, um, my zipper panel closure. Okay, so this will be the zipper, the main closure zipper. There's four of those, two exterior, two lining. Um, I have my exterior bottom piece. I'm just doing Decaville Heavy out of my seam allowances for that. 
Um, again, this is kind of a thicker material and I feel like that's all it needs. There's not a lot of interfacing on this bag. You don't have to use much, but I do suggest, so this is my top panel pieces. And she does suggest putting Decaville, Decaville light on those, which I did because your handles are also being attached to this piece. So it makes sense to have a little extra stability and you don't want it to be saggy up at the top. So I have four of those pieces cut out. I wanted to do all the exterior, just a minute. <laughs> all right. So there's this funky piece here. You're gonna be folding it. You're gonna be cutting pieces out this size. You're gonna fold it down once, cut pieces out at this size, fold it down again and cut pieces out at this size. And that'll give you all those front pockets and the back slip pocket. So make sure you pay attention to how many pieces at what line. It can get just a little tricky if you're not keeping track of that. Um, I do have all my pieces. I have two lining at that small, smallest fold. I have two linings at that second one and two linings at that third. All right, let's see, tiny, 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 that is correct. Um, I have one exterior at that smallest fold and I have one exterior at that tall fold. And then I have these pocket panel C and B pieces. I have one pocket panel B. I have two pocket panel C exteriors. And then I have my small side panel pieces. You need four of them and they are mirrored. Okay, make sure you're mirroring them and that's for exterior. All right, and then for my other inside pieces, I have my bottom panel lining. I have my two inside lining pieces and I have my pocket piece. I'm just doing one big zipper pocket on the inside. That is all of my pieces. Again, I'm using waterproof canvas on the inside. I'm using this faux leathery type of material on the outside, not a lot of interfacing. And then for my, um, all of my hardware, I have four total zippers because you have two front pocket zippers, one zipper closure on the top and one on the inside. So I have all of my zippers prepped and ready to go. I have my crossbody strap hardware. I have two D rings, four rectangle rings. Um, I'm doing a zipper stop on my main closure zipper. You can do a zipper tab, either one works. And my name plate and some rivets. I'm gonna use some rivets in a couple different areas. And that is it, those are all of our pieces. So let's start making those cute back. So the first thing I'm gonna do is finish prepping my handles um, and my connectors. I just like to get those out of the way at the beginning. So I've already done one handle and my crossbody strap and they were done just like this. I have a line drawn down the center. I have some double-sided tape a little bit away from that line on each side. This makes sure that I'm keeping my tape out of my seam allowance when I sew it up so my needle doesn't get sticky. I'm gonna fold my raw edges in just above that line. I'm not meeting it exactly. You want a little bit of space in the middle there so it folds nicely. You don't want it to butt it up right next to each other or else it won't fold as easily. And then I'm gonna sew down each side. Now, some people have been asking, how do I get my vinyl not to um, twist and turn when I do my straps? If you have any stretch at all to your material, you're gonna wanna sew down the same way down each side. You don't wanna sew down this way and turn it and then sew down this way. That'll give it that twist and you don't want that. So I'm gonna be sewing down the same way down each side.
Okay, so that's my handle. That's all there is to it. It'll go on my bag. I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna work on my little D-ring connectors here. I'm just folding my raw edges in just like I did on that handle. Okay, just like that. And then I'm gonna take my D-rings and some tape. And I'm gonna stick those in and I wanna tape it so my raw edges are to the back, just like that. All right, cause that's how it's gonna be put onto your bag. And you don't want those raw edges to show. So kind of get them in the middle there. You want this down far enough that you can sew it there and then fold this one up. And this is the side that will be sewn onto your bag. So this is what you'll see. All right, and then I'm gonna put a little bit bigger piece of tape on the back there. And that will be what I attach to my bag while I sew it right there, okay? So go ahead and repeat that for the other one. I'm just gonna put a little clip on it so it stays in place. All right, so those are my two D-rings. Now I'm gonna do these tiny little rectangle connectors. I'm just going to take them and fold all of the raw edges in on all of that, all of them and I'm gonna sew down each side. And I'm gonna take my rectangle rings and just put them in and, and sew this bottom edge, just to connect them all together real quick. Okay, and those are all of my connectors, my handles, all done, ready to go. I can put them all aside and they will be ready to attach to my bag. First thing I'm gonna do is work on that back panel, exterior panel. So I have my three, piece, three pieces for that and my top panel piece here. All right, I'm gonna take my exterior panel pocket, slip pocket piece and my lining. I'm gonna put those right sides together and I'm going to sew those across the top first. Fold those wrong sides together, right sides out, and I will top stitch along this top part here, this fold up here where we just sewed that line. Okay, top stitch up there. So that's what you're looking at. 
I'm gonna set this aside real quick. I'm taking the other back pocket piece and this top panel, I think this is C, okay? And I'm gonna be sewing those two together up here at the top. this again and we are going to top stitch with our seam going up we're going to top stitch along the exterior part Okay, so now we have our two pieces here. We're gonna put them together. I'm gonna to put this slip pocket piece right on top of here and line it all up. Make sure it looks good. I like to do it right there. I think that's good. It should line up right under it, okay? Just going to clip it so it stays even here and here. And we're gonna close up our pocket piece first and you're gonna Flip your exterior up, and we're sewing these two lining pieces together, okay? Yeah, sewing these two lining pieces together at a big seam allowance, because then we're going to trim that down so it's out of your seam allowance when we attach the bottom. Trim that down. And then we're going to baste the sides and baste this whole thing together. All right, so there is our back slip pocket. And now we wanna add our side pieces to that, which are right here. And they should be mirrored. Let's see. Um, right, and no, oh, no, other way. Okay, so it's got this little Sorry, let me move it out a tiny bit. All right, make sure you're doing it the right way on each side. This side, it's gonna have that little weird bottom. That's what goes to the raw edge, okay? Make sure they're opposites here, like that. All right, I'll do one at a time here. So line that up and sew that at your seam allowance. And then we'll fold it over and we're going to top stitch that. All right, so there's one side. Pay attention to your seam allowance because this is just a little bit bigger than what we've been doing. So pay attention to that in the um, pattern. And then you're going to press this away from this middle piece. 
and we're going to be sewing a top stitch on this outside panel piece and it goes through that seam allowance. Just a minute. My bobbin did something funky there. There we go. We're going to go ahead and repeat that on this side here. All right. And there is our back panel piece. Looks good. All right, we're going to set that aside and work on the front. We're going to start working on our front pocket pieces. So we're starting with the smallest pocket here. It's exterior pocket panel A. And I put my, I went ahead and put my label on that. You can do that if you want. There's multiple places on this bag that you could put it. I just chose to do it there. So I'm gonna place my zipper right side down, zipper pulling from left to right. If that's what you prefer, just make sure however you do it, all of the zippers on the front, the two zippers and your top zipper are pulling the same way. Cause it looks kind of funky if they pull different ways. All right, so I am basting this onto my exterior, it's right side down, okay? And then I'm going to take my lining piece, which is my exterior or my lining pocket panel A. Right sides together. I'm getting that zipper in between the two there. All right. And then I'm going to sew that now. She says a 3 8 seam allowance. I can't really get that without switching to a zipper foot. So I'm doing a 1 4 I may have to trim my front panel down a little bit in the end because of it, but it'll be just fine. what we got and I'm going to top stitch on this exterior part on this side of the zipper, the bottom side. what I have currently. All right, so now I wanna take this pocket panel B. Is this B? Yes. All right, and it's gonna go along the top here, so I'm gonna lay it right sides down. I'm actually gonna find the center real quick because I wanna make sure it's all centered on this zipper where I want it. I just did the tiniest of snips right there. Okay, so we're gonna line that up here along the other side of the zipper. I need my other clips, just a minute. Changing clips, all right, let's do these. And then I'm gonna baste this on first.
All right, just like that. And now I'm going to take the other pocket piece. Where did I put it? Is this it? Yep, that's it. Now it is the same size as this side, so it is going to be shorter and that's okay. That's okay. Don't worry about it. It'll all work out, I promise. Because you don't want this in your seam allowance, so you'll be trimming that up and out of your seam allowance. Okay, so you're going to put that on the back part of this panel, right sides together. All right, I'm lining up my two centers there. And now you're sewing at that bigger seam allowance along that zipper. So now, after that's sewn on, you're going to take this, flip it up, and now we're going to top stitch along this exterior top panel piece along the top part of the zipper. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna fold this in half again. And I wanna mark my center. It just makes everything a lot easier. I'm gonna take my other zipper. I wanna make sure I'm getting the right one. No, whoops. Oh, you know what I think I did? I used the wrong zipper on this one. This was the shorter one. It'll be okay. It'll even out along the sides. Okay, that's okay. All right, here we go. Here's my other zipper. Just gonna mark my centers real quick of this zipper. It's gonna go over the edges a little bit because it's a little bit bigger than it needs to be, but not by much. All right, now you wanna make sure you're doing left to right zipper opening, lining up those centers. And we're gonna baste this on this top piece first. Other pocket panel lining B, which is this gray one. All right, right side down. And we're gonna sew it along this part of the zipper here. I'm just gonna get my center clipped here, right there. Right sides together, my zipper is in between. And we're gonna sew that at our seam allowance, full seam allowance, whatever you're using. and over and again gonna top stitch along the exterior bottom part of this zipper
is what I have. You want to take the other piece of your pocket and the small pocket panel C here, and we will add it to the top of this pocket. All right, so again, I'm just taking this and I'm going to baste it first. I've got my centers marked. Take your pocket piece, you're going to put it right sides together along the back on the top and sew that at your full seam allowance. Okay, and then the last thing you do is you flip that piece up and we're going to top stitch along the top part of the zipper on the exterior part, exterior piece. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. Looks good. I like it. So now we need to close up all these pockets, right? So we have this pocket here and this pocket here. I'm going to do this one first. Just close them up. All right. About right there. And you're going to be trimming quite a bit off. bottom pocket here. It's easier if you just go this way, but make sure your exterior is folded out of your way. All right, and now we wanna just baste all of our sides together so the pockets and the exterior and everything are all one piece. Now, mine's a little uneven, do you see that? And that's fine, I'll just trim all that down.
Okay, so there is my front panel. So now I just need to add my side pieces to this. All right, here we go. So same thing. You need them to be, oh, okay. So mine's bit, mine's taller because I used that bigger seam allowance. All right. So now I can just, I think I'm just going to trim my top piece down just a tiny bit. This happened last time for me too. Okay, I trimmed a tiny bit off the bottom and top so it was the same size as the back panel and as these side pieces. Um, again, that happened because I used a bigger seam allowance on these zippers. So just pay attention to that. I just really wanna make sure that my pocket pieces still stay out of my seam allowances. I may end up trimming down these pocket pieces. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do a bigger seam allowance on these pocket pieces so I can trim them up a tiny bit and make sure they stay out of this bottom seam allowance. So I'll do that real quick and we'll head on to the next piece. Okay, so I just took up my pocket just a tiny bit so it's out of my seam allowance down here. Now we're gonna sew on these side panel pieces just like we did um, the back panel. There it is, super cute. All right, next up. Next thing we're gonna do is add our um, handle connectors. So basically all you're doing them is lining them up on the inside of this side panel on both sides. So I'm gonna put it right there and then I'm gonna put this one right there on the inside of that side panel. I'm gonna baste that down first. And then I'm gonna add the top part to that. Sorry for the barking dogs. All right, so here's my top panel pieces. They do have a slight um, uh, taper, so make sure that you're doing it the right way. I'm going, I have my centers marked here, so I'm just adding that up and then I'm going to sew this onto my front panel piece, right sides together. This has some Decaville light on it. Again, it's to secure these handles and make them more sturdy. And here we go. Make sure you're paying attention to your seam allowances. Sorry for the panting dog. <laughs> I have a new dog, Oakley, and she's a little bit bigger than Marley Mae. <laughs> All right. All right, so that's what that's gonna look like. Now I'm going to pull it up my seam allowance is going down towards my bottom part of the panel, and I'm going to top stitch on the bottom part of this panel.
And that is what you should have when you're all done. If you want, you could put a rivet here and here. There's a little bit, I think there's enough that you could put it through all the layers right there if you wanted to. All right, now I'm gonna repeat on my other panel, on my back panel. All right, so we are going to put these two exterior pieces together. So we want them right sides together and we're gonna line up the edges here. All right. Really, you just wanna make sure that this seam right here gets lined up really nicely. Okay. All right, go ahead and sew those sides together. Now what you can do is actually, I'm probably gonna undo one side. Um, I'm gonna do the first side and then add my D ring and then do the second side might be a little bit easier than I'm only fighting the bag with one side doing my D-ring for my crossbody strap. Make sure I have the right seam allowance. Okay. She says to trim that seam allowance down a little. It's a pretty big seam allowance. And then I'm going to just open this up and add my first D ring on without, I just threw away my clips. <laughs> oh, I'll have to dig those out later. Okay. I thought I was throwing away trash. Ay, ay, ay. Here we go. So you want to put your connectors right here. All right. So my first one will just be easier because I can open up my bag like this. I did have the thought if there was an easier way, like this isn't the best, my favorite way to add connectors. But for this bag, I really can't think of a other, different way other than you could just clip your strap on your handle. Um, rings if you really wanted to skip this part and still have a crossbody strap. Um, other than that, I can't think of a better way to add these. So here we go. You want this about an eighth of an inch down from this top seam right here. Make sure you've got it centered. That's about good. That's where I'm gonna put mine. All right, and then I'm going to sew down and around that and I'm gonna put an X through it as well. All right. I'm also going to get a scrap out to protect the vinyl on my hardware when I get close to it with my walking foot. like right here.
So there is my first connector, my first D-ring on my seam there. All right, so now the second one's gonna be a little bit more tricky because I have to add it after I have closed up the other side. So we're gonna go ahead and close up the other side here. down a little. All right, so now we need to add the other D-ring. This is what I mean, like it's a little bit more tricky because we're working with the whole entire bag now and we can't lay it flat. And it's hard to get your seam flat too right here. All right. All right, that looks about right. Okay, here we go. It'll be harder for you to see me do this just because it's hard to get the camera in there at the angle and the bag but I'm doing the same steps as the first one. I'm just dealing with the whole bulk of the bag now. Okay, so both of my D-ring connectors are attached. My bag is sewn together. I think we're going to put on our base next. All right, so we're gonna work on putting our base in. You can put purse feet on this bag if you want, but since I'm doing the smaller one, I opted to not put on the purse feet. Um, I have all of my centers clipped on my pieces. I think I'm gonna use a stapler a little bit on the curves. So I'll show you how I'm doing that, but I'm going to just clip my centers up first. Gotta love when those clips break on you. All right. There are so many different strategies for doing a rounded oval bottom like this. So I suggest you watch multiples and figure out which method works the best for you. All right, so I'm just clipping my centers first. I am gonna have to put notches in my curves to get them around.
All right, I'm just going to do a couple of little clips right here just to help ease it around like that. Do you see how it kind of flattens it out? That's what I want. And I'm going to just put a couple staples right along the edge of it. I'm not going far in because I want to be able to take them out. And if I go too far in, it won't work. I need to refill. Okay. So I'm just kind of doing the curves there. You, again, you don't have to. You can do it without doing this, but it does tend to shift and move, and that makes it a little bit more difficult when you're trying to sew these. So it's hard to show. <laughs> I'll just stick a couple clips in it. All right, now just go ahead and repeat with this other side here, and then we'll sew it together. All right, there is my finished. So the seam allowance on this bottom piece is pretty big. It's a half, an, a half of an inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around first at a one fourth inch um, seam allowance to just hold everything into place. And then I'm gonna go around again at a one half inch and get a really good, um, really good seam along the bottom. And then I will trim it down.
All right, so that's my one fourth. I've got everything tacked down really nicely. That went super smooth with those staples. I would highly suggest doing it with this bottom. All right, so now I'm gonna do my full seam allowance. So before you go any further, just look inside and look at your bottom and make sure there's no weird puckers or weird areas. It looks, it looks really good. So I'm going to trim down my seam allowance just a little bit here. But I am going to try and leave that second row, those two rows of stitching as best I can because um, it just helps with the seam not showing when I'm all done and turning it the other way, but I am trimming off, you see that? I'm trimming off all my staples as I go because hopefully you got them in there enough that you can get around them. This one, I'm not gonna be able to, so I'm just gonna pull that one out. And I do have a tool. You're okay, baby. Just gonna pull that one right out there. Maybe this one too, actually. Isn't that cool? Um, my friend Brittany or Leslie, I don't remember which one, showed me these staple removers. They work amazing for bags. You can get them on Amazon. Oops, sorry. I'm pretty sure I have them listed on my Amazon link. Okay, so I'm just trimming the rest of this seam down. I'm gonna turn this right side out so we can see how our exterior looks real quick. Good. Kind of roll out your seams a little bit there. Ooh, yeah. Telling you what, staples. Look at that. It looks great. All right. So here is the exterior of our back so far. Kind of love it. Not kind of. I really love it. Okay. Um, we're gonna work on. Our, I think we're going to do the zipper panel next, actually. Let's do the zipper panel next, and then we'll go to our lining. So before I head to the lining, I'm just going to go ahead and prepare my zipper panel for the top of the bag. Um, this is my zipper tape. I have marked a line across the end here. I'm going to split it open. I'm going to pinch it and fold it down and I'm just going to baste it right there. Now, I've seen the way that people um, like trim it and burn the edges, which I've tried a couple times and it doesn't work all that well for me, but if you know what I'm talking about, you can totally do that along these edges instead of basting it. Um, but I am just gonna do it old school. <laughs> all right. like that. I'm going to baste that down and I'm sorry the black is always harder to see on camera than lighter colors. I apologize for that. But I have done this quite a bit in my videos. See if you 
can see that it's just basted down there and then I'll trim that to be even with the zipper. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side here. You can always hand crank the first couple of stitches too and then I take my pin out. It's usually how I do it. All right, and then I'm gonna trim that zipper even. Okay, and then make sure you burn your ends so they don't fray. All right, so there's my zipper all ready to go. I've got my zipper panel pieces. All I did was put um, a 1 4th inch wide double-sided tape along all the edges and folded them over. So all of my edges on my panel pieces are finished, basically. I'm gonna take my zipper, and this is my exterior. They're both gray. One's waterproof canvas, and one is that faux leather, whatever you wanna call it. Um, I'm gonna place it right sides together with my zipper here. And I pretty much line up the zipper with the edge of where I folded it. So it's in just about a fourth of an inch. It's up to you. You can do a little bit more if you want. Um, that's just usually how I, how I do it. And so I am going to just unzip it. It makes it easier once you've got it right here. And then I'm going to clip that a little bit ways down. And now I'm going to baste that on. And then I will add the lining to the other side. I have that basted on. Now I'm gonna take my lining and sandwich the zipper in between the two right sides together. All right. And then I will sew at that bigger seam allowance now along the zipper. And I will turn it over and top stitch when I'm done. All right, here we go. Just make sure you stay inside the zipper panel area. Don't go outside onto just your zipper because that won't look pretty. Okay, there it is. Now I'm going to flip it out so I can see the right side of the fabric or material. Ugh. Another clip broke, awesome. <laughs> I need to buy stocking clips, all right. And now I want to top stitch this together. Basically I'll baste it all and top stitch it. All right, here we go. If you're wondering why I'm using gray for this part, because I only had one roll of that pretty blue color for the exterior, and I had cut almost all of it out and got to these couple of pieces. <laughs> I didn't have enough left. 
So I was almost able to use just one roll, but just shy, just shy of it. So if you are going to make this small bag, be prepared to use a roll and like a fourth of another one. Or mix two colors. All right, so that's the back, that's the front, all ready to go. I'm gonna repeat, ah, I'm gonna repeat the same thing for the other side. All right, there's my zipper panel. I am going to just fold it in half and clip my centers. And that will help for when I attach it to my lining in my bag. I will put this aside and we will start assembling our lining. Okay, so this is my lining piece. This is my zip pocket piece. I am just going to install that onto my lining here. Get that where I want it. Okay, I'm gonna sew around this rectangle that I already sewed on here. She's got great instructions for how to do this. My only difference is I just cut out one piece instead of two. I will just cut it open along the bottom after I sew this all on. It's up to you, you can do it either way does not matter. All right, right sides together. I'm gonna sew around my rectangle here. It's wanting to slide. All right, here we go. I'm just going to cut out this rectangle. I do a little V or Y shape by the corners and then I cut it down the center here. Just like that. Pull this pocket through the other side. All right, you can press this with an iron if you want. My waterproof canvas creases pretty dang nicely, so I don't think I have to. And then we are going to put our zipper in there. I'm gonna have the double-sided tape along my zipper. I'm gonna take the bottom one off first, stick that in, and then I will line up and put the top on.
gonna sew that in. Okay, I'm going to take this, I'm going to fold it up to the top. I'm going to connect that first and then I'll cut the bottom along here because you do pull the bag through the pocket. And then I'm just going to press the edge up here since I am closing it up through the bottom. I want to sew it with the ends up. It just helps everything. I used to not do it that way, but the more I sew, the more I realize this is the best way to do it. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew up my sides. going to trim this up a tiny bit and then we will go to the next step. All right, so I'm going to take my lining piece and I'm going to take with the zipper and my zipper panel. I want my zippers going the same way. I'm going to line that up in the center on the top here. I have my centers all clipped out so I can see where it's at. I'm going to baste this to my lining first. It's right side up. Both of these are right sides up, okay? Both of them. All right, I'm gonna baste that first.
All right, so these are my top panel pieces for my lining. Um, make sure they're going the right way. Now you're gonna place that on top, right sides together. So my right sides are facing each other now. Lining up my centers, and now I'm gonna sew that on. Make sure you're paying attention to the seam allowance given. You're gonna press that panel up. Your seam allowance is gonna go up and you are going to top stitch along this top panel piece. to connect it to my other lining here. So I'm gonna take the piece I just did with the zipper panel. Zipper is facing up, lining is facing up. I'm gonna line those up, baste, and then add the top panel piece just like I did on the first side. Okay, so after those are together, we're going to sew up our sides and then we're gonna add our bottom piece, which is gonna be just like our exterior, the oval bottom. The only difference is you're going to sew your lining at a little bit bigger seam allowance. Make sure I clipped my zipper out of the way so I'm not sewing over that. Um, you're gonna start at the top with your normal seam allowance and then you're going to increase it as you come down just so your lining isn't baggy inside of your bag. Okay, next we're gonna add our bottom piece. 
I'm now going to attach the bottom to the bag. Oh, I should probably open up the zipper slightly here. Um, and we pretty much do it the same exact way that we did the exterior. So I'm gonna do the same process. The only difference will be is I am using a bigger seam allowance to sew it all together. So I'll be using that five eighths seam allowance to sew this bottom together. And, and again, that's so it fits in my bag nicely and that I don't have it all baggy. Um, kind of important, makes your bag look a lot nicer. All right, here we go. All right, so once we have both pieces done, we are going to turn our exterior inside out. And you're going to turn your lining right side out. And you're gonna put your lining inside your exterior. Now, it doesn't matter which way you do this part as long as your right sides are together. But when your lining is slightly smaller than your exterior, it's easier, easier to sew it <coughs> this way so you're not trying to stuff that bigger exterior into your lining. Um, okay, oh, and then I wanna make sure my lining pocket that I'm pulling the bag through is open. All right, here we go. So now we just wanna clip all of the top together and we are going to sew it up. I think I am going to flatten my seams here. I'm gonna match my corners first, and then go to my centers, and then go around. When you do this as well, make sure your zipper pocket, not your zipper pocket, your zipper closure is opening the correct way, left to right, as you put it in your bag. I have done that wrong many times. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm gonna take this to my machine and sew it up.
Okay, so I have this all sewn together. I'm just going to trim it down a tiny bit, probably like by a fourth of an inch, and then we will turn this right side out. All right, here we go. Pretty, look at that. Okay, so now all we have to do is, I'm gonna go around and clip the top where I want it, and we will do a top stitch, and then I will go in and I will close my pocket, and we will add our handles. Okay, so it is all top stitched. Looks good. All right, so now I just want to close my pocket here, which should be pretty dang easy since we folded it all previously. It's got a nice fold to it. So I just need to clip that together and we'll sew that up and then we'll add our handles.
put my zipper end cap on that as well. Look how pretty it is. Oh, I love it. All right, so let's just put on our handles. All right, so I'm just putting on my handles. Um, I really like to use this strap template that I got from Joe Lily Creations. The, the C and the B are like the perfect distance for putting on rivets for your handles. So um, I just put that, I line up the edge of that with my handle and then I mark it and then I punch it. You can also sew on the handles if you don't wanna use rivets, it's up to you. I'm just gonna rivet mine on though. And then I do, so that way they are all even. I don't have to worry about them not lining up correctly. I will link that um, strap template in the description. And this is just a hand press hole punch. This is on my Amazon link if you guys are curious about that. Okay, and then I just attach them to my bag. Just like that. You could also do two rivets if you wanted, you know, to make this a little longer and put two rivets on each, go for it. Make sure your handle's not twisted when you're putting it on. And then take it to your rivet press and press it in. one. There's two. All right. My handles are on. Look how cute that is. All right. So the very last thing I need to do is put on this um, zipper and cap. Let me Grab my screwdriver. Okay, so I have my end of the zipper. I like to just fold it in just like that and slide your cap on. You could put a dab of glue in there if you wanted to and then you turn it over and you just put in your screw. I got my little screw right there. I think my screw is the wrong size. I need to go get a different one. Okay, I got the right size now. Here we go. I didn't have them all paired together. Just put that screw right in there and it'll go through all of this zipper tape and secure your end on. That looks pretty stinking cute. And that's that. Just put our crossbody strap on and we are done. I love this material. It feels so awesome. It feels like leather. And there it is. There's our apothecary. Yay. Okay. We are all done with our small apothecary bag. I absolutely adore this design. It's pretty classy looking. I love it out of this Kaya faux leather collection from Indo Love. She's currently sold out, but just be patient. She'll get more in. Um, it's just a gorgeous bag and it's the perfect, if I go out for the day and need a little bit bigger than my smaller normal one, this is the perfect size. I really like it. All right. Thank you guys for watching so much. I appreciate it. Um, please like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me comments. Let me know if you have any questions and We'll see y'all next time.